The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. We just read that Hebrews chapter 2 verse 6. And he's making a distinction between angels and the ministry of Jesus. Look at verse 16 of Hebrews chapter 2. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Has that settled it? He took not on him the nature of angels. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wow. So Hebrews chapter 1 and 2 was to make a distinction between the ministry of Christ and the ministry of angels. So, which ministry should we take heed to? The ministry of Christ or the ministry of angels? The ministry of Christ. So, we ought to take heed to the things that were spoken by Christ. Question, which ministry reveals God? Christ or angels? Christ. So, the integrity of God and his word will be found where? In the words of angels or in the words of Christ? Words of Christ. Is God bound to keep the words of angels? Is God bound to keep the words of angels? No. He is bound to keep the words about Christ. He is bound to keep the words about Christ. Those are his words. Those were things that were uttered by his spirit. Remember, angels are ministering spirits. And Paul said, they are still learning. Angels are still learning the manifold wisdom of God. They are still learning. Angels are still learning. That's what Paul said. When God manifested in the flesh, he was seen of the angels. Peter said that the angels desire to look into the gospel. They don't know the gospel. Angels don't know the gospel. They desire to look into it. Look at it. First Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Which things the angels desire to look into. So angels are subservient to man. Angels act according to man's ignorance or knowledge. Angels act according to man's ignorance or knowledge. That's why you discover that there was almost an absence, pay attention, there was almost an absence of the ministry of angels when Jesus was around. When Jesus was around. There was almost an absence of the ministry of angels. In fact, it reduced. You saw angels before he was born. You saw angels when he was born. You saw angels the moment he began his ministry. After John acknowledged him and he left the wilderness. Angels were almost not available until his death. From after when he started ministry till when he died, you won't hear of angels at all. They were quiet. Look at the book of Acts. The ministry of angels was so minimal. Not that they were no more working. 
but they were not giving out messages. Did you observe? In the book of Acts, they were not giving out messages. The first one who tried to give a message was in Acts chapter 5. He says, go and speak to these people the words of this life. He told Peter in Acts chapter 5. The other one said to Peter, arise, kill and eat. <laughs> you remember that vision? How can an angel be telling Peter to kill animal? Animal in a vision. Thou shalt not call what God has clean unclean. Very harsh. Thou shalt not call what God has clean unclean. Now, the next time you see angels after those two events in the book of Acts, speaking is in Acts 27. When the angel appeared to Paul and said to Paul, no life shall be lost, save the sheep. Notice that they were limited in speaking. Angels were limited in speaking about God. Why? Because the revelation of God has been given now in the person of Christ. The revelation of God has been given now in the person of Christ. Are you in the building? In the person of Christ. So you must understand that it was ignorance in the Old Testament that made angels preachers. It was ignorance. But now that the spirit has been given that aspect or that borrowed oppression of angels has been taken off. Now we have the spirit of God and God has given gifts to men. God has given gifts to men. So if you are still seeing angels speak to you in dreams, there is wahala. Serious problem. If angels are still speaking, when Jesus is here, fully revealed in the scriptures by the Holy Ghost, and angels are still preaching to you, <laughs> there is problem. God spoke through men. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1, through the prophets. Hebrews 1.2 in his son. Hebrews chapter 2. The word spoken by angels. How shall we escape? Escape from what? The word spoken by angels. If we neglect the salvation given by Christ. Is it clear? So the angels and their words have been reduced by a disclaimer in the New Testament. That in the New Testament, we know God well in Christ. And we know Christ well in the prophecy of the prophets. What was the prophecy of the prophets that unveils the integrity of God? The sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. Remember, Luke 24, 25. Jesus called them fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. What did the prophets speak? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. That is where you find the integrity of God's word. The message of Christ. Because Christ is the integrity of God. So God's integrity in the Old Testament will only be found in the message concerning Christ. Either the sufferings of Christ or the glory that will follow. In the Old Testament, that is the only place we find the integrity of God confined to. The message of the prophets concerning Christ. Are you in the building? The message of the prophets concerning Christ unveils the integrity of God in the Old Testament. And what God promised concerning Christ, he has fulfilled. Hallelujah. He has done what? He has fulfilled. How did he fulfill it? In that, he has raised Jesus from the dead. Acts 13, 32, as I close this service. And we declare unto you glad tidings. How that the promise which was made unto the fathers. The promise which was made unto the fathers. God.
God had fulfilled the same unto us, their children. In that, in that, hallelujah, in that, he hath raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second psalm. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. That's the integrity of God's word. What is the integrity of God's word? The integrity of God's word is that the promise he made to the fathers concerning Jesus, he has fulfilled it by raising Jesus from the dead. So in the Old Testament, where do we find God's integrity? In the promise of his resurrection. And what happened in the New Testament? He rose from the dead. So God's word has worked. God's word is not going to work. God's word has worked. The integrity of God has been brought to bear in the person of Christ. In the resurrection of Christ. That's why brother Paul says, if Christ be not risen from the dead, then our faith is vain. Why? Because the validity and the confirmation, the assurance and insurance of God's word is revealed in the resurrection of Jesus because that is the promise that God gave in the Old Testament. We are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.